Hey guys, today I thought I would share with you all my tips and tricks for saving time making your webtoon on Clip Studio Paint. Please note that I am not going to go over using any of the 3D assets on Clip Studio Paint, but I think you'll still find this video useful, so let's get started. Tip 1. Customize your setup. So you might notice that my setup looks a bit different than yours, and that's because I've customized it so that I have quick access to the tools I use the most. So to get rid of tabs you don't use, you can just drag them and X them, or you can press this double arrow thing to hide them. But I like to just get rid of it. So for example, here are some tabs that I find to not be that useful that I've gotten rid of. And you don't have to be afraid of getting rid of tabs you don't use and think you might need later on because you can always reset the workspace to the default or find them in the window tab. Tip two, pre-save your layers. If you have a blank file saved with all your frequently used layers that is also labeled, you can open this file instead of creating a new document every time. For example, I always have my line art on a vector layer, my flats underneath, and my shadows on a multiply layer with a clipping mask. I even have my speech bubble saved because it's faster for me to simply copy and paste the speech bubble each time. Tip three, adjust your line art thickness. If you ever wanted to make your line art thinner or thicker without having to redraw it, then this tip will be a huge time saver. Just press this button here that is apparently called operation, select your line art layer, find your tool property tab, and adjust the brush size. Keep in mind that it does adjust the whole entire layer, so if you want to change just a part of it, cut that section out uh, to make its own layer, then merge it back down. Tip 4, the vector eraser. So as someone who has pretty messy line art, this is a game changer for me. Go to your eraser tool, select the vector eraser, and then click this middle button. Then the eraser will erase everything cleanly until the next intersecting line. I know, it's amazing. You're welcome. You can thank me by watching my ads and sharing my videos. I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. Tip five. The fill bucket. You probably already use the fill bucket tool, and if you don't, I don't understand, but I thought I would share with you my settings that I have for mine that I find make it the most useful. I did have this whole thing where I explained this more in detail, but then I thought it was a bit long and boring, so I cut it out. So let me know in the comments if you actually want any explanation for this. Tip six, clipping masks. I've talked about clipping masks so much before, so I'm not going to belabor the point, but here's the button that makes a clipping mask. Set this layer of multiply and bam, instant, easy shading. Again, you're welcome. Tip seven, transformation tools. I frequently use the scale, rotate, and warp tool because I tend to draw my faces and so many other things crooked, and then rather than redrawing it, I'll usually rotate, resize, or move, and warp it to make it look right. I'll also use the free transform tool to fake adjust perspective on things. Tip eight, easy sound effects. There are a lot of different ways to create sound effect letters, but this is what I do because it's easy and fast for me. Basically, I handwrite the sound effect letters with a border around them. And to do this, all you need to do is find your layer property tab. If you can't find it, go to Window and click on Layer Property. Then, on that tab, click the circle button thingy here. And now, everything that is drawn on this layer will have a border on it with this color and this thickness. Tip 9. Gaussian Blur. So, one of my secrets, or maybe it's obvious, but anyway, create a background. I will oftentimes take a background I have already drawn copy and paste a portion of it, and then just gosh and blur the hell out of it so you can't quite tell that I didn't actually bother to draw anything new. Also, I don't know what the difference is between the regular blur and the gosh and blur, so if you know, let me know in the comments. Tip 10, shortcut keys. If you have never used shortcut keys before, they can seem overwhelming at first, but they are a huge time saver when you get the hang of it. You can customize them yourself, but Clip Studio Paint does already have the defaults saved here, and 
it does look like a lot, but just try to learn a few at a time and slowly add more to your repertoire. For example, I started off with just learning the shortcut keys for the eyedropper tool, the fill bucket tool, and changing brush size. Okay, so that's all my tips. If you found this video helpful, consider dropping me a like and subscribe. If you have any more questions or requests for future videos, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye.